People are quitting ultra processed food and the food industry is not happy. Food companies are freaking out about Ozempic and Nestle in particular has already gathered a crew of food scientists to ensure that the snacking doesn't stop. Then if you're thinking about eating less ultra processed food, how about don't do that, idiot? Signed, totally not a food industry show. And finally, with fast food prices surging, Americans are walking away and the industry is starting to regret getting greedy. Welcome to the first installment of things I wanted to make a video about, but there isn't quite enough to make a full length video. This is a new series where I'll cover topics that will make you wanna change your behavior. Well, maybe not, it's not that deep. I just wanna make more fun, chill content where I don't end up doing a month's worth of research and then making like one to two videos per month. I always end up finding a lot of interesting stories related to food, habits, health, sometimes funny, sometimes interesting. Let me know if you like this format, if you like this series. I feel like the first one might be a little rocky, but we'll see how it goes. First up, Nestle is trying to sell more food to people who are literally taking medication in order to help them eat less. Nestle will market a new $5 line of frozen pizzas and protein-enriched pastas in the United States, which it says it designed specifically for people taking drugs such as Wegovy or Ozempic for weight loss. So in response to people taking Ozempic, a drug that helps people lose weight via reducing their appetite, aka making them eat less food, Nestle, the largest food company in the entire world, who's famous for selling items such as Hot Pockets, Toll House Cookies, and Kit Kat Bars, the same Nestle who for some strange reason has started calling themselves the world's leading nutrition, health, and wellness company, yet could not be more the opposite of that. I literally laughed out loud when I saw that on their website because in 2021, a company document revealed that Nestle admitted that quote unquote, more than 60% of its food and drinks products do not meet a recognized definition of health. They said that in their own documents. <laughs> then just earlier this year, some of Nestle's own shareholders, their own shareholders, urged the company to cut down on the number of unhealthy products that it sells. As a result of the clear link between bad diets and chronic health conditions such as heart disease and obesity. And what did Nestle do for this plea for the health of the people of the planet? They flat out refused. <laughs> and that happened just a couple of months ago. And like, I don't wanna get too off track here, just last month. Nestle was caught doing potentially the most anti-health behavior possible, which was putting sugar in baby formula in Africa against the directive of the World Health Organization. And now Nestle, the health and wellness company, has created an entirely new brand to help people taking medication to combat their obesity eat more pizza. I mean, be healthy. The world's biggest food company, which sells DiGiorno pizza and Stouffer's meals to major grocers, said it developed the new products with more protein, iron, and calcium for people taking the wildly popular appetite-suppressing drugs called GLP-1 agonists. Tom Moe, president of Nestle USA's meal division, said it will pitch the meals in a new brand, Vital Pursuit, as food solutions for people who want to complement their use of the drugs with the right nutrition high protein, good fiber, the right minerals, like potassium and vitamin C. Nestle, as a former obese person, I can tell you that we don't need food solutions. We are quite adept at figuring those out on our own. That's kind of the problem. Like even if you add more vitamin C to an ultra processed pizza product, it is still an ultra processed pizza product. And here Nestle is acting as if they're creating this new brand in order to help people who are taking weight loss medications simplify the process of eating healthy while they try to change. But if you read the rest of the article, it's just so thinly veiled. <laughs> Nestle, whose biggest brands include Kit Kat chocolate bars and Nescafe coffee, started working on companion products to the GLP-1 drugs last year. We moved real fast on this, Mo said. <laughs> Nestle CEO Mark Schneider said in October the company was carefully monitoring whether spreading use of the drugs might dent demand for its food products. So in other words, Nestle is terrified that people might even eat just a little bit less of their products. But unless people eat less, then they're not gonna lose weight. Like is Nestle not essentially admitting that they're concerned that people might start making healthier food choices? Which points out why it's so hard to be the solution when you're a big part of the problem. The math just doesn't really math. 
Like the fact that Nestle is already carefully monitoring whether or not Ozempic dents demand for its food products this early in the game. Like how many people are taking Ozempic? It can't be that many people just yet. The fact that they felt that they needed to get ahead of the curve by weaseling their way into the lives of the people that they're trying to change is kind of scary. The urgency behind the whole thing is a little bit deranged and Nestle isn't the only one taking this kind of approach. Behind the scenes, the food companies are freaking out about Ozempic. Many food industry stocks have actually been dropping since Ozempic hit the scene and the top executives at these companies and their fleets of food scientists are already quote, studying how the weight loss drugs will affect dietary behaviors. Because the speculation is that if enough people take these drugs, then a lot of people will be eating less and the food industry hates that idea. Like, yes, they're a business, they have to make money, etc. Okay, fine. But for the world to get healthier and become less obese, then people by necessity have to eat less and they have to eat less of what? products made by companies like these. Yet these guys are all but admitting that they're gonna do everything possible to ensure that that doesn't happen. The fact of the matter is the food industry's business model is predicated on getting as many people on planet earth as possible to eat as much as possible. The way they make more money is by us eating more and the most profitable products are not fruits and vegetables. And I think a lot of people don't realize that or, or what that entails. But the only way the food industry can continue to please their shareholders is if they find a way to convince more and more people to eat more and more of their products every single year. Some investors have been worried that food companies will lose sales due to the hunger suppressing drugs. But executives at companies like Nestle and ConAgra see the medications presenting a new opportunity to pitch products such as beef jerky, popcorn, and frozen meals. Mondelez executives have said their snack bars fit perfectly into the diet of a GLP-1 patient. In other words, these guys are banking on Ozempic users not eating less food. In fact, they see these people as an opportunity, which is insanely messed up. Like, think about it. They now have a way of identifying the most vulnerable people. Nestle thinks they're gonna shoot fish in a barrel now. And we wonder why the world is struggling with obesity. At the moment where you're trying to change your eating habits, there's the food industry swooping in to ensure you don't stop eating their products. Mo said Nestle spoke with people on the drugs to develop the meals and will be offering them samples soon. It's downright scary to think about what kind of food science is going into these products. Oh, what's that? You have no appetite because you're taking an appetite suppressing drug? Don't worry, we made this one just for you. They're like a virus mutating and becoming stronger in the face of any opposition. The fact of the matter is nine times out of 10, health foods don't come in packaging, no matter how much vitamin C Nestle pumps in there. Up next, if you're concerned about ultra processed foods, don't panic, you might just be a snob. We'll be taking a look at this article titled, The UPF Panic is a Fad. So lately, it seems like there's been an avalanche of research saying that ultra processed food is extremely bad for us. Basically, every day, a new report comes out stating the potential dangers of these foods. And this topic has gone viral and people all around the world are rethinking the food that they're eating. And a lot of this virality has to do with Dr. Chris Van Tulken and the book he wrote called Ultra Processed People. He released it in 2023 and he really got the world thinking about ultra processed food. He kind of put it on the map. Now, historically, the food industry hates getting bad press, especially when it's the type of press that results in people rethinking their food choices. In this article, the UPF panic is a fad is one of the funniest things, in my opinion, that the food industry does to try and undermine any bad press that it does get. So the article promises to debunk the ultra processed panic, right? But it turns out to be just a condescending, catty, personal attack on Chris Van Tulikin. So let's take a look at it. The tagline of the article is, Chris Van Tulikin cannot seem to decide what an ultra processed food even is. The whole article ends up being one big condescending, petty takedown of Chris Van Tulikin. That's it, there's nothing else, there's no argument there. And the journalist who wrote it, someone named Christopher Snowden, is literally just going in on him, attacking his character, attacking his credibility, trying to make him look stupid, trying to make him look evil. And keep in mind, Chris Van Tulikin has the credentials to write this book. 
Okay, let's just see. Chris Van Tulken has a medical degree from Oxford and a PhD in molecular virology. He is an associate professor at University College London and a practicing infectious diseases doctor. He's also a broadcaster for children and adults on BBC television and radio, has won two BAFTAs. And this journalist doesn't bother addressing any of Chris Van Tulken's ideas. He's just completely focused on making him look bad. At one point, the journalist Snowden says, if Jamie Oliver is is the fun police, Chris Van Tulken is the Taliban. So Chris Van Tulken, the doctor, writes a book saying, hey, maybe don't eat so much ultra processed food. It's clearly associated with disease. And this journalist pipes up to compare him to the Taliban. So at this point, I'm like, who is this Christopher Snowden guy? Like what, what is his deal? I take a look at his other articles and um, here he is promoting smoking a lot, promoting gambling, promoting vaping, promoting sugar but mostly promoting smoking. It's fine if you smoke, but if you're pro smoking as your stance at this stage in the game, like smoking causes lung cancer. That has been a proven fact for over 30 years at this point. And wait, what's this? Christopher Snowden is listed by name on a website called tobaccotactics.com. Turns out he works for a company that receives funding from the tobacco industry, as well as big food and big soda. And I don't know what's appropriate to say here, like I don't wanna get sued, but I think we can all connect the dots. And if you start paying attention, you'll notice this kind of thing happens a lot, but I feel like the tide is turning right now. People really wanna make better choices for their health. And I think the tide has been turning for quite some time at this point. And people are really open to messages like Chris Van Tulikens. And as we just saw with Nestle, food companies who are currently profiting off us making bad decisions, they don't wanna lose that. And they are willing to go to extreme lengths to ensure that doesn't happen. So keep an eye out for more journalism like this in the coming years. Next, fast food prices are surging and people are not loving it. <laughs> The price of fast food has been on the rise for a while now, and it's at the point where it's so out of control that 80% of Americans say fast food is now a luxury because it's become so expensive. At one point in time, the whole idea behind fast food was that, yeah, okay, it's not the healthiest, best quality option, but hey, it's fast and cheap, right? But all that has changed recently. Fast food is just not a good deal anymore. And people are really annoyed about the price of fast food. Now, when asked, the fast food companies blame this on inflation. Yet it's clear that the prices have shot up a lot faster and more aggressively than inflation has. And it's simply much more likely that these guys are taking advantage of the situation more than anything else. Here's the rate of inflation at fast food restaurants since 2014. McDonald's, 100%. Popeye's, 86%. Taco Bell, 81%. Chipotle, 75%. Jimmy John's, 62%. Arby's, Burger King, Chick-fil-A, Wendy's, 55%. Panera, 54%. Subway and Starbucks, 39%. As Finance Buzz explains, over the past 10 years, prices at the restaurant studies grew at nearly double the national rate of inflation. In the case of the first five chains that ranked at the top, prices increased at more than double. In McDonald's, prices grew more than three times the national rate of inflation. It seems much more likely that companies are getting greedy at a time when food prices are already painful. And oh yeah, fast food companies don't seem to be hurting for cash. McDonald's USA posted sales up almost 6% in the US in 2020 and 7.5% in 2023. But people are finally getting fed up. And I think this whole thing is extremely interesting from a behavior change perspective because these companies know that changing the price is sort of like boiling a frog. As the prices go up, we might complain, we might get annoyed, but we're actually very unlikely to change our behavior. We'll mostly just continue with the same fast food buying habits. We'll just keep buying it anyway. It takes a certain threshold of annoyance to actually shake up our habits and change our behavior. And these companies know that they can just keep pushing and that most people aren't gonna go anywhere up until that critical threshold is met. But the thing is, for a certain subset of the population, that threshold has been met. The frog is fully boiled and it wants out. I guess that doesn't really make sense, but you get you got where I was going with that. <laughs> but yeah, people are finally so annoyed at the price of fast food that they are changing their behavior. Warren Kohlauer, a 40-year-old student in Kentucky, said he used to go to Dunkin' almost every morning for a breakfast sandwich and coffee, but had to cut it down to about four days a month because of the price. I can't bring myself to spend $8 on that food, he said. Chad Fry, a cartoonist and illustrator based in California, who said he used to be a fast food junkie, said he'd cut down his fast food habit from four or five times a week 
to just twice. Some diners said that they thought the quality of fast food meant it just wasn't worth the price anymore. I think mentally you maybe don't think it tastes as good anymore because you're paying a lot more for it, Fry said. For Martin Jennings, a 51-year-old truck driver in Florida, fast food is often the only meal available on the road, and it's become increasingly hard to find affordable options. He said most truck stops had chain fast food restaurants, and you're just stuck with whatever's there. It's just so expensive that we try to avoid it, he added. Instead, he uses a freezer and microwave in his truck to store and heat up leftovers he brings from home. I pack as much food as I can before I leave the house to avoid eating out, he said. It makes me so happy to hear this if you are really into fast food or if you're maybe even a little addicted to fast food. This is an amazing time to change your behavior. Fast food being more expensive actually makes it less tempting to your brain's decision-making processes. But no surprise, now that we finally reached this tipping point, now that people are walking away, the food companies are trying to pivot before it's too late. Out of nowhere, articles saying fast food price war and race to the bottom as fast food chains scramble to put out the cheapest, highest value deal to lure people back in. Major quick service restaurant chains are adding cheaper bundles and meal deals to nudge customers back to locations. See, once you change your habits, they're likely to stick, at least for a little while. So if the fast food companies let you go too long not eating their food, then that will become your habit. So they can't let that happen. So now that people are leaving thanks to the inflationary prices that they had, fast food restaurants are suddenly capable of moving back to value. But is it too little too late? So did you like this video? What did you think of this like format? This one was all about the food industry, but in the future, I wanna do kind of just like a random mix. Anything that helps helps motivate us to make like better choices because I find that knowing this kind of stuff really, really does kind of give you that juice. I know it has really, really helped me. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next one.